Hey guys, it's Elise and welcome back to another My Cupcake Addiction episode. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some really fun and super simple chocolate decorations. I love these guys because they help take all of your cakes, bakes and sweets over the top. Today I'm going to be using chocolate, so I've got white and milk. If you're using chocolate that contains the ingredient cocoa butter, you will need to temper it. If you're using a compound chocolate, which is chocolate that doesn't contain cocoa butter, you can melt it down in the microwave and it's going to set really nice and firm. This also works really well with candy melt, so you can make your decorations as light, bright and fun coloured as you like. I'm using just some basic household equipment, so I've got a snap seal bag. I've also got some bubble wrap, so make sure that you're working with clean, dry bubble wrap. I've got some round paper towel roll and I've just cut it into little sections. Some parchment paper or some baking paper. And I'm using a silicone cake pot mould. I've got a little bit of luster dust. Luster dust is really readily available at all good cake decorating stores and it adds just a little bit of something extra to some of our decorations today. And I've also got some assorted sprinkles. I've got chocolate wafer bowls and then regular fun bright coloured sprinkles. Let's get started. The first technique that I want to show you today is kind of like a crinkled effect. So we're going to take some parchment paper, we're going to scrunch it up into a little ball. Scrunch it nice and tight and then open it back up again so it's relatively flat. Now that kind of gives us this little bit of texture. So when we actually create the chocolate design, all of that texture is going to go onto it. For a little bit of an added effect, I'm going to brush half the sheet with some gold luster dust so you can see what happens when you add a little bit of colour to your chocolate decorations. As a tip, if you have a clean new makeup brush, that allows you to put a lot more luster on in a much shorter amount of time instead of working with a teeny tiny little paintbrush. So now I'm going to take some of my milk chocolate and I'm just going to spoon it on. You don't need too much here. And then I'm going to use my offset spatula and I'm going to spread out to the edges across that luster dust. You could also use a knife, but these are fantastic for spreading around your chocolate. They just make the job a bit easier. Do try not to be spreading over it too many times because you don't want to drag the luster dust up off the paper and through the chocolate. So your sheet of parchment should look something like this. Now I'm going to pop mine just onto a tray so that it sets really nice and flat. And you want to set that in the fridge. It's literally going to take like five minutes to set because it's so nice and thin. With that one setting in the fridge, I'm going to take my bubble wrap and I'm going to use milk and white chocolate here. So you can see a couple of different variations. So again, I'm going to pop a nice couple of tablespoons or teaspoons of chocolate onto the bubbly sides. And you'll need a little more of this chocolate because these have to be a bit thicker than that parchment paper. And then I'm going to pop some white down the other end. And in the middle, I'm going to put a dollop of each. Perfect. Now, I'm going to give these guys just a little swirl around with the end of my offset spatula. Not too much, I just want to marble them a little. And then I'm going to use my offset spatula, come up to my milk chocolate first, spread it out to the edges, and then come down to that marbling chocolate. And then, wiping my milk chocolate off so that I don't get too much of it into my white chocolate, I'm going to come down and do my white out to the edges. Now, as I get closer, I'm going to just move that marble chocolate together and kind of just scrape the two of them together. The back of your chocolate's not a great indication as to how it's going to look, so if you want to see how it's looking and how that marbling effect's coming through, you can pick it up and you can look straight through. That one's going to go onto a tray and into the fridge. It's going to take about 15 minutes to set. Now going back to using just straight parchment paper again, I'm going to show you like a classy version and then a really fun kind of a colourful version. Once again, taking some of our milk chocolate, spooning it on. And then I'm going to use my offset spatula to just disperse my chocolate evenly over my parchment paper. Beautiful. Now take that and give it a couple of good taps on the bench to smooth it off. Once you're happy that it's all glossy and smooth, but before it starts to set, I'm going to take my little multicoloured wafer balls and I'm just going to sprinkle them. Don't go too crazy with these. You don't need a lot to pack a really powerful punch. And I have also seen this done with things like chopped up Snickers bar, pieces of Toblerone, Reese's peanut butter cups. Now before I put that one into the fridge and before it starts to set too much, you'll notice that it's sort of touch dry but it's still flexible so I can still bend it around. This is your opportunity to cut it into some fun shapes. So I'm going to use a knife and I'm just going to cut down the sides so that I've got really nice kind of edges. I'm going to divide it this way into three or four. Now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut straight through the centre here. And if you can manage to get all the way down all three of your pieces, it makes it a little smoother and it means you can get everything done in one nice swift cut. Perfect. Now those are all divided and separated and ready to go on our tray, off into the fridge to set. A similar technique, but a bit of a more fun and slightly different spin on it. Once again, we're going to take some white chocolate onto straight plain parchment paper and I'm going to spread it around with my offset spatula. 
It does pay to not go all the way to the very, very outside edges of your parchment paper because you can see I'm actually using those edges to manoeuvre my paper around so I can handle it, pick it up, get it onto those trays nice and easily. Again, some nice taps on the bench to flatten it off. And then we're going to put some fun, bright, funfetti sort of sprinkles all over our white chocolate. This is fabulous for a kid's party, fabulous for anything where you just want to add a pop of colour, but you want it more than just sprinkles on a regular cupcake. With this one again, I've let it just get tacky but still flexible, so I can still kind of roll it around, but to touch it, I'm not getting any chocolate on my fingers. And I'm gonna take some circle cutters. So my circle cutters, I've got all different shapes and sizes, and I'm just gonna turn them into the chocolate and just cut out some nice little circular shapes. And I like to give it just a little twist and a little turn to make sure it's cutting nice and sharply through so I'll have no problems getting those out. If you find that your chocolate is sticking to your circle cutters and it's trying to pull it up off the paper, just wait another couple of minutes because it might just not be semi-set enough. And then some of my alternating sizes. And then that one gets placed on a tray and off into the fridge to set. Moving on now to our little cake pot mould. I'm going to use the side that doesn't have the little holes in it that normally lets a little bit of the cake pot mixture out as you're baking. And I'm going to use my luster dust. So rather than painting the entire inside, because I didn't find that to be so effective, I'm going to take luster dust on my paintbrush and I'm going to flick it into my little containers. Just kind of dusting it over the top. Now you want to take a little bit of chocolate. I tried this with the white chocolate and it wasn't as effective. Dark chocolate gives you the best result. Milk chocolate also works beautifully because you get that really nice contrast between the gold and the brown. I'm going to take about a half a teaspoon of chocolate and I'm going to drop it in. And then I'm going to gently use the back of my spoon to just run that chocolate right up the sides. Once again, try not to move the chocolate around too much in there because we want that nice little bit of luster dust to stay just where we've put it. We don't want it dragging around to make a luster streak. Don't worry if these are a little bit thin. We're gonna do two coats, get that first coat on and then we're gonna get them into the fridge. It's only gonna take about five minutes to set and once they're set, you wanna come back and we're gonna apply just another thin coat. The reason that I do two thin coats here and not one thick one is so that I get nice sort of even edges. Otherwise the chocolate's all got a tendency to pool down the bottom of the bowl and then you don't get a nice kind of a thick top edge that you can work with when you're trying to join these together. Once I've done the second coat and all of those, back in the fridge for five minutes and they're ready to pop out. For our final technique today, I'm gonna to be using my Ziploc bag and just spooning in some of my milk chocolate. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to snip a very fine little tip off the end. So I've got almost like a really fine tip pen, but in a snap seal bag. I'm going to take small pieces of parchment paper now and I'm just going to create almost like a bit of a Celtic swirl or a bit of a, just a haphazard swirl design. Make sure it's nice and big and loopy, but you also want to make sure that you go over it a couple of times so that it's strong enough to hold its own weight. And then pop that into one of your little towel rolls so that they set like on a nice curve, almost like a bit of a basket, but not quite. Those ones now go off into the fridge to set. As a little sneaky extra technique, while you've got that Ziploc bag filled, did you know that if you've got a steady hand, you can actually write in chocolate? Great for things like Valentine's Day, putting short messages. You can't write an entire sentence, but you can write fun words like love by just writing straight on some parchment paper and making sure that all of your letters completely join up. Look at that, perfect for Valentine's Day. All of our hard work making chocolate decorations is paid off and we have a ton of different options. So now I guess this is the big reveal. My favorite one has to be the one with the luster dust. So to get that off, you want it to be nice and firmly set. So take it straight out of the fridge. I like to lay it down on the table and then just peel that back. So you can see there the side that we've got the luster dust on and then the side that we've put no luster dust on. But what you've got is a really nice texture. It's kind of giving you that crinkled effect without really using anything fancy at all. With all of these, I kind of like to break them up into almost like triangly type shapes or different high shapes. Think Remember, you can always break them smaller, but you can't make them big again. So if in doubt, leave some of them a little bit bigger than you think you're gonna need until you're really at that decorating stage and you wanna make sure that you've got enough pieces to go around, but enough of a wow factor to make them super nice and high. Our next little pieces are just gonna be our little kind of curly nests and they just come straight out. But you can see there those gorgeous little curves, lines, colors and detail, kind of in a bit of a filigree effect. Our little circles, the fun funfetti circles. So you should just be able to pop those little circles out of that main piece of chocolate. Whenever I make chocolate decorations, I try to never just make one type because I think that your cupcakes, your cakes and your bakes can look amazing, 
with sort of a bit of an assortment of all different sizes, shapes, textures and colours on top. The bubble wrap is another one that's I think a bit of a wow reveal. So I'm going to tip that over so it's flat on the bench again and then I'm going to peel. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure without cracking my chocolate so that I can actually pull that bubble wrap up because it's going to stick quite firmly into the chocolate. And as I get to the end, I'm going to put my hand on the rest of my piece and pull the remaining bubble wrap off. With this, once again, just break it up. You can cut it if you want, but if you do want to cut it using a knife, then I'd recommend just waiting for that chocolate to come to a little bit more of a room temperature because then it'll cut a bit easier and it won't be so likely to snap in places that you don't necessarily want it snapping in. How cool is that? That is texture. It's an amazing decoration and it's going to add so much height and wow factor to anything you make. Your little triangles with those waffle balls or whatever sprinkles you've used should just come out like lovely triangles, but be very, very careful with the pointed tips of them because you don't want to knock those tips off. They're a bit of a wow factor because they're so sharp and pointed. Your little lettering should just peel straight off the back of that parchment paper and because we've made sure they're all joined together, they're perfect just as they are. And then for our little chocolate balls. So for these ones, because they're in silicone, they're kind of going to want to suction into it a little bit. So you kind of have to peel them away, but be careful because they can kind of pop out and surprise you sometimes. You can see those gorgeous little details that we've got. There's enough of a hint of metallic to make them super classy, but we haven't had to use tons and tons of luster dust to get that effect. If you want to use them as half balls, you can, but you can also take them, place them on a hot fry pan for just a second or two to slightly melt those edges, and then use that heat and those melted edges to join them together. They make a gorgeous effect, and everyone's going to be asking you how you did this. We've made seven amazing, decadent and utterly delicious chocolate decorations. You guys are only limited by your imaginations as to how you can apply these to your cakes, cupcakes, bakes, brownies, pretty much whatever you like. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for two new videos every week. If you make anything using these decorations, I would love you to share your photos with me on Instagram using the MyCupcakeAddiction hashtag. I always love to reshare some of my favourites. As always guys, thanks very much for tuning in to MyCupcakeAddiction.